we have the lion who solved it in a single night, Sir Isaac Newton. Oh no, here we go again. This is Newton propaganda. I will give this one thing to Newton. He was so proficient at building this mythical image of himself during his time that 300 years later, physicists are still repeating his lies. In this case, we're talking about the brachistochrone problem, which is a problem that Johann Bernoulli proposed to the mathematicians of the time and Newton solved in this legendary manner. That's right, when Newton came back home, he found a letter from Johann Bernoulli. He opens up the letter, finds out the problem, solves it in a single night, and sends back the anonymous letter to Bernoulli. Wow, that's quite a story. Um, could that be true? How could we possibly know that? That he found out about a problem after he came home from work, and then he solved it overnight. How could we possibly know that? We know about this story from the very reliable account of his biographer, Conduit, who says that he was coming back from work from the Royal Mint. By the way, I have another video about Newton at the Mint that tells some horror story about his work there. But in any case, I digress. So Newton was coming back from the Mint, and then he did not come home till 4 in the afternoon from the tower, very much tired, but did not sleep till he had solved it, which was by 4 in the morning. How reliable is this? But Conduit, the biographer, is no other than Catherine Conduit, Newton's niece, who did live with Newton at the time in London, but who is also the source of the very unlikely story of the apple inspiring Newton's work on gravity. A story that was very likely fabricated by Newton himself and spread by Conduit to obscure the fact that Newton did collaborate and talk to other mathematicians and physicists of the time about a possible theory of gravity, in particular, Hock. Anyway, why do I claim that the one-night stand story of Newton and the Brachistochrone problem is fabricated? Well, let's try to first establish a timeline of when the problem was proposed and when Newton solved it. The problem is publicly proposed by Johann Bernoulli in June 1696. And the problem is public and it circulates and other mathematicians of the time, such as Jacob Bernoulli, Leibniz or L'Hopital, find the problem and solve it. And in fact, Leibniz convinces Bernoulli to extend the deadline of the problem to make sure it reaches England and it reaches Newton and they include the following words in the challenge. I love this because it really reflects a very poor opinion mathematicians of the time had of Newton. It says that there are fewer who are likely to solve our excellent problems. I Fewer even among the very mathematicians who boast that have wonderfully extended its bounds by means of the golden theorems, which they thought were known to no one, but which in fact had long previously been published by others. So Bernoulli's challenge gets republished in what's called the Programma in Groningen in January 1st, 1697, that, because of a difference in calendars, in Britain is the 22nd of December of 1696. Now, Conduit, Newton's sneeze, tells us that somehow Newton is completely oblivious about all of this happening all over Europe, and he only finds out about the problem on the 29th of January at 4 p.m. and overnight he solves the problem and he submits a solution on the 30th of January. Now, how is this even possible? At the time, Newton is still the president of the Royal Society. The problem is available since June. It gets republished for the sake of reaching Newton. Newton has spies and pawns all over England, all over Europe, but somehow he only finds out a month and a half after it's republished in the programma. There is just no way. There is absolutely no way. Newton knew about the problem early on. He did not solve it overnight. By the way, what did Newton himself have to say about this charming episode of the history of mathematics? I do not love to be donned, pestered, and teased by foreigners about mathematical things. By the way, in other solutions, like Jacob Bernoulli's solution or Leibniz's solution, they deduce that the solution must be a cycloid. But Newton's solution is that the solution is the cycloid, and he shows why the cycloid works, 
but he does not deduce that the solution must be the cycloid. So how did he know that the solution was the cycloid? Maybe, just maybe, he was aware of the problem before the 29th of January? So you have to develop the calculus of variations to be able to solve a problem like this. Last, I will say that Ibrahim's video seems to imply that Newton invented the calculus of variations to solve the problem, which in fact is not true. Newton's solution barely uses calculus, while in the words of Lagrange, it was Johann Bernoulli's solution and Jacob Bernoulli's solution that initiated the calculus of variation to solve those types of problems, and it was Euler who put everything together in an original work in which the profound science of the calculus shines through.